just a brief story of how I got here. I had just finished my master's in, in 2011, and I was on top of the world. Um, and then I thought to myself, yeah, I'm a scientist, that's blue sky research. Um, I think maybe I should try the corporate world. So I joined the corporate world to be a PhD student there. And then when I joined the corporate world, I forgot that I was a scientist and thought I was an economist. <laughs> so I wrote to my supervisor, so my supervisor and I were busy with some research topics. And so I wrote her a, a, a proposal, which basically said to her, it, it, I can, I'm gonna quote this line for line. I said to her, you know, um, in any given country, a variety of economic activities actually contribute to the economy. And in our continent and in the emerging economies as a whole, the private sector plays quite a big role, which contributes around 50% of the GDP in our continent and in the emerging economies as a whole. That being said, if you zoom in to the private sector, each and every enterprise in there actually has a level of influence which is measured by their turnover and profit and how many people they employ. So you have large enterprises and those are your very big players. So these are people who know exactly what they're doing. These are, these are really, really capitalists. You have medium enterprises which, which sort of can communicate with the large enterprises. They also know what they're doing. And then you have the SMMEs, the small enterprises. Right? And in that, you can actually have the very small enterprises. Now, if you look, look at Silicon Valley, a very small enterprise are those startups. So they form, form part of the economy. They employ around 10 or less people. They generate some tax. They are actually registered companies. And then you have the micro enterprises, so, and those are your survivalists. So in South Africa, we'd call those puzzle shops. So those are the ones who are just there to put bread on the table. And then I said, well, but if you zoom into the very small enterprises, they're already registered. They already have some text generated. We know how much they are and how many they are. However, they cannot communicate with the large enterprises because of their business processes are not as very, as very stringent as the large enterprises. Especially if you look at the emerging economies. In our continent and, and country, our very small enterprises, which has a lot of impact, are the retailers. However, retailers have to speak with the large enterprises, which are their suppliers. And that being said, these two people do things differently. So as a very small enterprise, I am registered, I, I do have to generate some tax, but I can actually be exploited by the large supplier because they know exactly what they're doing, they know exactly what they want from me. So it was a very nice story. My supervisor was like, okay, great, perfect. So how does this work in theoretical computer science? It's a perfect story. Economics is great, but in our field, how does this work? And this is what we came up with. <laughs> On the wheel, though, yeah. So, yeah, th this, is what, uh, this is basically what I've just said in theoretical computer science. And it's quite, I mean, it's quite simple. I can explain it to you. And I think you just had this in your brains, like, what the hell? So, uh, so what you are looking at, actually, you are, you are actually looking at very small enterprises, right? And what you are also looking at is that we have as very small enterprises, a group of them here. And they have just bought a goods, like it's various items from a supplier as a single entity. This is what you're looking at. And what this shows you is that you have five enterprises or 10 or N or infinity or what have you not. They've just bought 10 bags of millis, or 1,000, or P millis from, an, from a single supplier. And how much the supplier wanted them to take, but how much did they take from the supplier? Now, I'm sure this is still quite confusing. So I'm gonna put this in very layman's terms. So in layman's terms, what that language was showing you is that you have a single VSC. So this say your sub-general dealer somewhere in Soweto wants to buy 10,000 liters of Coke. That's a lot. Yeah, they, they say that. So he goes to a very large enterprise, which is the supplier, to say, well, I would like to get 10,000 liter, 10, liters of Coke. And the supplier says, well, I have 100,000. Now, in, in, a very, in this kind of environment currently, what happens is that Joseph thinks, well, if I don't get 100,000, next time I'm gonna need another 10,000, and then the, the large enterprise won't have 10,000, so I might as, actually, might as well take everything. So currently what Joseph would do, or is doing, is that he's gonna take all that 100,000 liters and overstock and put it there. Now, the problem with that is that that 100,000 liters, 100,000 liters, they might not even be bought. So he is overstocking, compensating for what might not happen, and people might not even buy it. 
So that affects the profit margins. So what this does then is says, well, I only want 10,000, you have 100,000, I can get people. I'm sure there are people, the other general dealers would like to, to buy this. So he goes back and says, well, is there anyone who's interested in Coke? Is there any other general, leader, uh, general dealers who are interested in buying Coke? So they all come together and lamp up together. And let's say they probably get 90,000 liters of Coke and not that 100,000 that were given in, in the beginning. That does not mean that the sale doesn't go through. However, they will not get the discount that they would have received had they gotten 100,000. Now, there's another problem with this scenario is that then Joseph needs to know all these other general dealers. He needs to call them or he needs to drive to them and it's gonna take, take a long time. Transactional costs going back and forth, calling people that you know. And so I would like to introduce you to a simpler version of this and this is what we are working towards and that's that what that language is about. So we would like to introduce to you a virtual buying cooperative where Joseph doesn't need to know who he's dealing with. What only Joseph needs to know is that I want 10,000 liters. What Joseph only needs to know is to send an SMS that goes to somewhere in the virtual marketplace to say I only need 10,000 liters. And in that virtual marketplace, what would happen is that software agents representing each and every small enterprise would interact with each other to actually negotiate on behalf of the enterprise that they're representing. Now one can say that sounds so much like a group purchasing platform. Now the problem with the group purchasing platform for small enterprises is that the group purchasing platform will tell them what they want them to buy. So a group purchasing platform would say, oh my word, I actually have five millis today, don't you want five millis? And we, then we are back to the transactional costs, and then we are back to overstocking, and then we are back to them buying things they don't need. What we want to do is to actually empower them to buy what they need as and when they need it, at any time, at any point, without traveling back and forth. Now, another person might say, but that sounds exactly like a virtual enterprise. However, a virtual enterprise is good if you have large enterprises that know exactly what they're doing, that actually have very clear business processes and clear business goals. Now, very small enterprises in the retail industry hardly ever have any clear business goal. That clear business goal is to sell and make profits and put food on the table. So virtual enterprises in that respect wouldn't work. So a virtual buying cooperative encompasses these two things together. And the difference is that it is quite temporal. It doesn't mean that we're friends today, we're gonna be friends five minutes from now. We are friends because we want we all want Coca-Cola, but when we want Millie's, I'm gonna get out of friends. So it's only stable for this particular need. And second of all, everything is done in a virtual marketplace. So think of a virtual place as, as something like cloud computing. We know we have this big boom right now where everything is in the cloud. So everything with this model is also in the cloud. Now, going back again to say, but what does this, why, why, why this? Why does it tell us? Now, what I'm trying to tell you is that we would actually move, want as scientists to move from blue sky research, which is that language that I showed you, it's very blue sky, to actually use that blue sky research to help in socioeconomic development. And what this does, it actually lowers transactional costs. It has some potential to impact on profit margins for these enterprises. And because they already spend three hours per week actually ordering stock, we would like them, and actually when they do order the stock, they actually have to close the business processes. We would like them to arm them to say, take control of your business. You don't have to stop when you do your stock orders. We cannot tell you when to do it. You can do it at 12 p.m it doesn't matter, you can still purchase what you want. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you what we are currently investigating, which is a virtual buying cooperative that is blue sky to socioeconomic development for very small enterprises. Thank you. Yeah.